Last autumn, I planted a mixed green manure in my relatively new polytunnel with the purpose of improving the soil conditions in this high value growing space. Earlier this spring, I cut down the abundant growth, covered it with a ground cover fabric, through which I planted tomatoes and other heat loving crops, based in the idea that the decomposition of the sheet mulch of biomass will feed the soil and the plants throughout the summer. I learned a lot in my first attempt of building soil fertility in this way and at this scale, and like almost everything else in the gardens, there are many refinements that I would make to the methods that I used. If I was to do this again, I would want to find a better balance between the amount and quality of the organic matter that was produced, the simplicity and ease of managing it, and maximizing the benefit to the soil and the following crop. But when growing a green manure in this way, it means that you can't grow overwintering or early spring crops in this valuable space. So there is a cost to this process of improving the soil in the form of having less food to eat, share, or sell. This raises the question if this strategy was the best option, when there are other methods that I could use to improve the soil quality and fertility that would have allowed me to grow these additional crops as well. There are many benefits to growing green manures or other types of cover crops, but how would I go about answering the question of whether it was worth it in this particular context? In order to figure out an appropriate answer to this question, I need to go through the possible benefits of a green manure and how they relate to the particular issues of my situation. Planting an overwintering green manure or cover crop like this can be a useful way to prevent soil erosion or to reduce the chance of nutrients leaching away in the heavy winter rains. But these are not relevant in this context as this garden is protected by a sheet of plastic. Another benefit to growing specific types of green manures is that they have the capacity to fix additional nitrogen in the soil, such as with the two types of clover and the vetch that were part of the mix that I had sown. This could be beneficial, but is not an essential issue in my context, as I had already added a lot of nitrogen to the soil in the form of dried chicken manure. There are also lots of other ways of adding nitrogen to the soil that are much more convenient and affordable at this scale than growing a nitrogen fixing green manure. Beyond the role of nitrogen fixing, I had selected the specific mix of green manure seeds as it included a range of different plants that had a vigorous root systems, which would grow deep into the soil as well as leaving the topsoil in great condition. The texture of the soil definitely seemed to improve, becoming more friable, and I suspect that the soil condition was better than it would have been if I had chosen to continue to grow crops. But I really don't know, as some of these crops would have also had aggressive and extensive root systems which would have done a similar job. Improving the texture of the soil can be done in a number of different ways, and if I was going to grow a green manure, I would definitely prefer growing something that left the soil in great condition, but it wasn't a critical factor here. The weed suppressing potential of cover crops also wasn't a significant issue. Given the work that I had already done to remove the problematic weeds, and the plans that I had for covering the whole garden with a ground cover fabric in the summer. Helping to boost soil life was one area that I was interested in, both through the beneficial secretions from the roots of the plants while they were growing, and in the availability of food for the soil biology in the form of organic matter as the plants were dying back or decomposing. I really don't know where to begin to evaluate the possible impact of this. To compare the possible benefit to the soil life from growing this green manure, compared to managing the soil in a different way and continuing to grow a range of edible crops. A related part of all of this is the desire to increase the amount of soil organic matter, both in the form of the soil life itself and in the food for the soil biology, but also in the form of humus and other long-lasting organic compounds, which enable the soil to hold more nutrients and moisture, as well as improving the soil structure. This was one of the main reasons for growing this green manure in the first place. But the big question for me is, how does the amount of biomass that can be produced by growing these plants and the subsequent increase in the amount of soil organic matter compared to other ways of improving or increasing the amount of soil organic matter, such as simply adding compost or aged manure? Looking at the impressive growth of the diverse plants that make up this green manure, I wanted to get a sense of how much organic matter had actually been produced, and I decided to take a sample to get some approximate figures. I measured out a one meter length of one of the beds that seemed typical of the growth in the polytunnel, and I carefully cut and collected all of the above ground biomass. As there are five beds in this polytunnel, each 20 meters long, this means that the section of biomass that I removed re represents about 1% of the 100 meters of the beds of the polytunnel, and therefore approximately 1% of the total above ground biomass produced. 
I was able to compress all of this organic matter to fill a 25 litre bucket. So I can estimate that there was roughly 2,500 litres or 2.5 cubic metres or 3.25 cubic yards of fresh organic matter in total when compressed. This amount of material also weighed 6.5 kilograms or 14.3 pounds. So in total there would have been 650 kilograms or 1,430 pounds of wet biomass produced by this green manure. So if I'd removed all of the above ground biomass produced by this green manure, rather than letting it decompose in the soil, it would have produced a compost pile that was roughly 2.5 cubic meters to start with. This might have produced in the region of 1 cubic meter or 1.3 cubic yards of finished compost after months of decomposition. But it was possibly significantly less, given that there was only a total of 650 kilograms of biomass material to begin with. But of course this was just the above ground stuff, and figuring out what the below ground biomass was in comparison would be a much more difficult process. It seems that with a lot of different methods of analysis, there is often these big unknowns, and in this case it is the amount of biomass that was produced under the surface of the soil, both in the total quantity of the roots produced by the plants, and the amount of the secretions released into the soil by the roots during the lifetime of the plant. Even if roughly the same amount of biomass or organic matter was produced under the surface of the soil as was grown above the surface of the soil, the total amount of organic matter produced by this green manure crop doesn't seem as impressive as I had originally thought, even though it looked like a substantial amount of growth. If I was to make a really rough estimation, I think that the total organic matter produced above and below ground by this green manure would be roughly equivalent to between one and one and a half cubic meters of already decomposed compost. The main reason for growing this fertility building crop was that I felt that I didn't have enough compost to adequately prepare the beds in this polytunnel, and I thought that growing a green manure would make up for it. When trying to amend the soil in an intensive growing space like this, I would ideally want to add enough compost to make a 25 millimeter or one inch thick layer on the beds. With 100 meters of beds, each 80 centimeters wide, that is about 80 square meters of growing beds, not counting the paths, which would mean that I would want to spread about 2 cubic meters or 2.6 cubic yards of compost. If I could, I would prefer to add double that amount, requiring 4 cubic meters or more than 5 yards of compost to produce a layer 50 millimeters or 2 inches deep, but I didn't have anywhere near that quantity of compost, which is why I grew the green manure in the first place. But with my very rough estimations, the biomass from this green manure would have only produced the equivalent of about 12 millimeters of compost, or about half an inch, which is only 25 to 50 percent of the amount of compost that I would have preferred to have added. In all of this, I'm not sure how to account for the possible benefits of having increased biodiversity and soil activity due to the decomposition of this material on the surface of the soil or within the soil itself, rather than removing the material and decomposing it in a compost pile somewhere else. But in the end, the amount of organic matter available to the soil ecosystem because of this green manure crop was definitely substantial, and much better than doing nothing, uh, but not as much as I would have preferred or thought would have been produced. This raises a really interesting issue for me about the amount of land that is needed to grow the organic matter to produce the amount of compost that I would want to add to an intensive garden. Having access to manure or lots of household and yard waste that I can turn into compost can be a great way to make up this amount of organic matter, which is what I'm doing to supply a lot of the compost needs in my family scale gardens. But if I was trying to grow the material specifically to produce enough compost to amend the soil in this garden, then it seems that I would need an area at least as large as the garden itself, if not twice as big. So, reducing erosion and retaining nutrients in the soil as possible benefits of a green manure or cover crop are not really relevant in this context, and fixing extra nitrogen would be beneficial, but not really a priority in this case. Improving soil structure, boosting the soil biology, and increasing the soil organic matter are all desirable benefits, but these can be achieved through other means without giving up the option of growing additional crops over winter and into the spring. The amount of biomass produced by this green manure crop and the overall longer term benefit to the soil was no doubt significant, but I think that it would have had to have grown it for a lot longer and cut and mulched the material a number of times to get the levels of organic matter that I was hoping for. 
Looking at this another way, buying in two cubic meters of finished compost or well-aged manure and spreading it onto the beds I think would have made more organic material available to the soil and with a lot less time and effort. The real benefit of course would depend on the quality of compost that I was able to get or how much money I was willing to spend to get really good compost. Having tried the approach of using a green manure, I think it would have been better to have spent the money to buy in the necessary finished compost and to continue to grow the crops throughout the year. Or perhaps the best method would be to buy in the compost and to grow the green manure as well, but only for a shorter time over the winter, and then to dig it in earlier in the spring so that I could get a spring crop. But this depends on me having the time and the capacity to manage the crops in this garden during the spring. This is where I think another important benefit of growing green manures comes in. To grow something that benefits the gardens when we don't have the time or capacity to grow and manage another crop. Because growing something is better than growing nothing and a lot better than letting the weeds get control again. And this was probably the deciding factor for me in this case, as at the time I didn't feel that I could manage this additional growing space with so many other things going on. So in this case it was really useful to be able to leave this space to grow a green manure, to build the soil and to improve the soil fertility, so long as it wasn't too hard to get rid of so that I could grow the crops that I wanted to when I was ready.